Yes, he did. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Yes, he did. He picked me up, turned me all around. He placed my feet on solid ground. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Yes, he did it. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Yes, he did. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Yes, he did. I've been sick and I thought I couldn't get well. He healed me. And now I got to tell you that everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Yes, he did. God did it. Yes, he did. God did it. Yes, he did. Oh, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Yes, he did. He picked me up, turned me all around. He placed my feet on solid ground. Everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. God did it. Yes, he did it. God did it. Yes, he did it. God did it. Yes, he did it. He made a way. Yes, he did. He picked me up. Yes, he did. He turned me around. Yes, he did. He placed my feet on solid ground. God did it. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, 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 who did it, who did it, who did it, who did it, God did it. God did it. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad. And certainly we're so excited about what God is doing in the lives of the believer. We thank God for those of you who are here in the sanctuary and those of you who have elected to worship via internet. I want you to know you're at the right place at the right time for whatever you need from God. A herf has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Amen. I'm excited about what God is doing. Amen. He, the songwriter said he keeps on doing great things for me. Amen. What I like about God, God doesn't have to do anything. He does it everything well in his own timing. He does everything well. Amen. I'm on in scripture. It's a familiar passage of scripture. It's John 3 and 16. And it says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. How many of you know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you don't know where you would be. Amen. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be, what I would do, what I would have. The songwriter says, without God, I could do nothing. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where 
would I be? Where would I be if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Tell me where would I be? Where would what he do for us? He kept my enemies away. He kept my enemies away. Let the sun shine. Then he rocked me. When he knew. So if it had not been. For the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would what he do? He kept my enemies away. He kept my enemies away. Let the sun shine. He rocked me when he knew last time. So if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Amen. This morning, I'll be coming from a very familiar passage of Scripture. Psalms 121. Reminds us that God neither slumbers nor sleeps. Psalms 121. The book of Psalms is not divided into chapters. It's numbered according uh, to numbers because they are not chapters. It's not a book. It's actually a collection of of psalms or songs or hymns that were written by the psalmist David. And uh, Psalms 121 says like this, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. First and foremost, the author lets us know that we should always, at some point in our life, we have to Stop looking around and taking a survey at what's going on. If we be honest with ourselves, we have more than enough to complain about. There's more than enough to cry about. There's more than enough to worry about. But as a believer, we must look to the hills from which cometh our help. I believe the author was encouraging us to look at our problems from a different perspective. What happens when you look at something from a higher elevation? Now, whatever it is, it appears to be smaller. Amen. See, we face our adversities. We look at them face to face or head on. But when we realize there is a deity, a God, an almighty, an all-knowing, an all-powerful that's bigger, better, smarter, and wiser than we are, we must look to him for our strength. We must look to him for our help. He said he'll be a present help in the time of trouble. The Bible lets us know in the second verse, it says that my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. When you realize who the creator is, he made heaven and he made earth. Genesis said in the beginning, God created heaven and he created earth. God created everything. 
And if he created everything, he can fix everything. When I have problems with my car, you take it directly to the dealership for the best results, even though you can take it to the shade tree mechanic or you can take it to Sears or you can take it to Macy's or you can take it to Jiffy Lube or you can take it all these other types of places. Uh, but for best results, you need to take it uh, to its creator. See, the problem with so many of us is we take it to these other places to save a few dimes, to save a few dollars. Uh, but in the end, we wind up with more trouble. We wind up with more problems. Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, it becomes or it gets to be more expensive than it would have been if you would have took it to the dealer in the beginning. It's the same with our problems. We take our problems to our families and we take our problems to our friends and we take our problems to the coworkers and the neighbors and we take survey to see what other people think we ought to do. But as a matter of fact, the people that we're seeking answers and wisdom and guidance from, sometimes you'll be in a place where you're experiencing something that they have never experienced before. You'll be in a place where God is using you in a way or trying to get something out of you that uh, they've never experienced before. They've never dealt with before. They've never had to pray about it before. But if you take it to your creator, the one who made heaven and earth, he's more than qualified to handle all of your problems. He will not suffer thy foot to move, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. In other God words, our God doesn't take a rest. He doesn't get weary. He doesn't get tired. Although I would like to go 24-7, 365, the flesh that I'm wrapped in will cause me to get weak. Don't talk to me this morning. The flesh will cause you to get weary. But a God, the all-knowing God, he never sleeps and he never slumbers. The reason why he never sleeps and never slumbers, I believe, is because he's always watching after you. I remember as a little boy, they used to sing the song all night and all day. The angels are watching over me. God, uh, he never sleeps and he never slumbers. He says, behold, he that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. Behold, he that keepeth Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. I, I like the other psalm where David writes, he says it like this. He says, a thousand shall fall to thy left side and a ten thousand to the right side, but it will not come nigh thy dwelling. Sometimes uh, people all around you may be experiencing some type of a turmoil or some type of a tragedy or some type of a devastation. Uh, but when you are really rooted and grounded in God and you stand on the firm foundation uh, that Jesus Christ said in the New Testament, upon this rock, I will build my church and the very gates of hell will not prevail against it. When you stand on that rock, when you trust in that God, when you believe in that creator, no matter what's going on around you, you will find a strip from somewhere that you never knew you really had. Sometimes what I've learned about adversity is adversity comes to show you how strong you are. Sometimes you don't realize the strength that you have in you. Come on, somebody here. Let your car break down on 285. You never know. You never realize that you can put it in neutral and push it at the same. Y'all not going. Adversity, sometimes it brings out the best in us. Adversity shows us the strength that God has endowed us with, that Holy Ghost power that God has given us. It does more. My Holy Ghost is designed to do more than cause me to run up and down the aisles and speak in tongues. 
the Holy Ghost, it'll keep you. He says, thy sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall even preserve your soul. No matter what is going on, look to the hill. No matter how hard it gets, look to the hills. No matter how difficult it gets, look to the hills. Y'all not going to help me here. Look to the hills from which come of your help. No matter how tired and frustrated you are, sometimes you got to look to the hills. The songwriter says like this, when I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. He said he will not allow the sun to smote you by day. In other words, the heat from the sun won't even destroy you. Even the coldness from the moon, it won't even destroy you when you really look into God. I wonder what would happen if we began to look to God in every area, in every aspect of our life. See, God has, God, does God have complete and total dominion over your life? Does he have it over your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit, your finances, your family, your career, your ministry, your dreams, your aspirations? It's God at the center. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things shall be added unto you. You ain't got to worry about what you're going to eat because the Bible says, I once was young, but now I'm old. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. You don't have to seek the things. You don't have to run after the blessings because in Deuteronomy 28, he says the blessings shall find you and overtake you. You don't have to stand on nobody's neck to make yourself appear to be taller. When God's hand is on your life, you don't have to call nobody out. Come on, somebody. And expose anybody to make yourself look better. Because if you really love God and you know God, the Bible says, he says, when your brother is in altar, when your brother fall, he that is spiritual must restore him. Come on now. Preach. See, the thing about it is, you can tell who the real spiritual folks are. Because when people fall or when they have fault or when they have a halt, the first thing the spiritual person want to do is they want to reach out and pray for them. They want to reach out and encourage them. They want to reach out and pick them up when they're down. But when you operate it in the flesh and when you operate it in the self, the first thing you want to do is you want to tear the person down. You want to call them out. You want to expose them and call and tell them, I told you so. That's not how God was. I'm reminded of Jesus and, and, and uh, he found himself uh, in a place where he was uh, put uh, the people that came unto him and they asked him. They found a woman and she was caught in the very act of adultery. And they said, Jesus, what should we do to her? The law says that we should stone her. And uh, Jesus knew the law. But they were also, Jesus also knew that he, they were trying to catch him up, get him caught up. Come on, somebody. Get him in the midst of something that he had no business. The, Jesus also knew that it was the Sabbath day. Y'all not going to hear me here. And so what Jesus did, and instead of uh, uh, telling him to go ahead and take the stone and knock her out, he got down on his knees and, and he began to write something in the sand. See, theologians still don't know what he wrote in the sand. He could have been writing down every last one of them names and every last one of their addresses and every last thing that they done. That's right. Come on. <laughs> he said, he without sin, let him cast the first stone. And I think that we would be better believers if, if we really just sit down and we really think about all the things that God has saved us from. We would be better witnesses uh, if we wouldn't stand up uh, like we're so self-righteous and we're in a place now where we can look down on people because you've been saved for 35 minutes. He said, he that without sin, let him cast the first stone. 
guess every last one of them realized that they couldn't stow not one stone. The reality of the matter is they probably couldn't even throw a grain of sand. Because, first of all, how do you know she was caught in the act of adultery unless you were hanging out in a place where they go do and commit adultery? How in the world do you know what's going on in the world unless you're partaking in the world? So, we as believers, we've got to know and understand that the Lord will preserve thee from all evil. See, the problem is we are so busy trying to get folks back and prove folks wrong and prove ourselves and show how anointed we are and show how powerful we are and show how the hand of God is on our life. And we use God's word to intimidate people and make people think that they are inferior. But we've got to get to a place where we don't have to prove ourselves to no one. All we have to do is look to the hill. I don't have to explain myself to anyone. All I have to do is look to the hill. I don't have to hear answer anyone's questions. All I have to do is look to the hill. See, the Lord shall preserve that going out and that coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The Lord will preserve that going out. And that coming in. If you would allow me, I want to read Deuteronomy 28 and then I'm going to go. Deuteronomy 28 says that God will bless Israel. He says, and it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God shall set thee high above all the nations of the earth. See, a lot of us, we want to be set up high above all the nations of the earth. But before you can be set up, there are some rules, some regulations, and some requirements. He says, and all these blessings shall come upon thou if thou hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. He says in the third verse, he says, blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the fields. Blessed shall be the fruits of thy body and the fruits of thy ground and the fruits of thy cattle in the increase of thine kin and the flock of thy sheep. Blessed shalt thy baskets and thy store. Blessed shalt thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be going out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies to rise up against thee, to be smitten before thy face. They shall come up against one against thee one way, but flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall cause it. See, the problem is we're too busy trying to fight our own battles. You're not strong enough to fight your own battle. But you serve a God that is strong enough to fight your battle. They come one way, but they'll leave out seven. That's what the word says. He says, the Lord shall command the blessings upon thy storehouse. In other words, there should be more than enough. And in thy settest, thine, whatever thou settest thy hand to do, and shall bless the land which thy Lord God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his way. See, we want the blessings, but we got to learn how to walk in his way and do things his way, not our way, because our way sometimes don't line up with his will. That's why the Bible says, when thou prayest, prayest our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. 
and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. When you really operate in the things of God, you don't have to broadcast it. You don't have to wear a sign around your neck say, I am anointed. You don't have to wear a sign around your neck that says, I am blessed. You don't have to wear a sign around your neck that says, I am healed or I am whole. People can look at you and identify the God in you. What do people see when they look at you? Do they see God working in you? Do they see God living in you? Or do you only look like this on Sunday mornings when you put your church face on? When you put your church outfit on? It's unfortunate that the reason why sometimes people don't follow us to church is because we only look like church while we at church. Or we only talk about the goodness of God when we're amongst the believers. But the Bible instructs us to go ye into the highways and the hedges and compel men to come. How compelling is your story? Look to the hills from which come of your help. I'm here to tell you, man will fail you every time. A woman will let you down every time. The author said it like this. He says, when my mother and father forsake me, then the Lord. The one that's closest to you, even Jesus experienced this. The disciple that walked with him. The one that saw him heal the sick. Raised the dead. Caused blinded eyes to come open. Judas, the same one that betrayed him with a kiss. A kiss is one of the most intimate things. You have to be close to a person (laughs) in order to kiss them. He was so close to him, close enough to betray him. Look to the hills from which come of your help. All of your help coming from the Lord. Now, God, we thank you this morning for this word reminding us that you never sleep and you never slumber. Lord, look on this, your people, this aggregation of believers. Some are searching for one thing and Somebody is looking for another thing. But you're the almighty God, the all-powerful God, the all-knowing God. Thou I'm not present. You're here and there at the same time. Cause them to know that you are the God of all gods. I speak a special blessing over you this morning. And I decree there, declare that there is no lack in this house. Satan, I serve you notice that your plan is canceled and you are defeated. In the matchless and powerful name of Jesus, if there is anyone sick amongst me, or amongst us, I command you now to be healed and behold thou thy plague. In the matchless and powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. At this time, we're going to go, but we never dismiss. I speak healing in your life. I speak deliverance in your life. An undeniable display of the power of God in your life. We won't rest until we see you blessed. We love you. We love you. And we love you.